Welcome. Hello, everyone. Well, sweetheart, for the program. <laughs> there is a man named Doris Rosser, and he has a desire to see a church within walking distance of every Christian in developing nations. I think he's getting there, sweetheart. Yes. He's just got to live a little longer. <laughs> uh, Noah's 96. 97. 97. 97. Wow. Well, also we have today Robert Leatherwood from the International Cooperating Ministries yes. and a great pastor. Yes. Pastor Matthew Hartsfield of Bay Hope Church in the big city of Lutz, Florida, and uh, we're, we're going to surprise you. There's a lot of good things come out of Lutz. <laughs> Absolutely. And a great, great musician today, Alan Tripp, and uh, he's going to play for us right now the Hallelujah Chorus. My favorite.
wonderful. Wow. That makes you want to stand up and shout. Yes, it does. Wow. Thank you, Alan. Well, we've got some guests with us today that are just going to set you on fire, I hope. <laughs> if your church, and I know there is many pastors, watch this program across the country and even in other countries, but this pastor has done something that few people have done. And uh, we're going to talk to him in just a minute. But we want to talk to the main guy, <laughs> Robert. Robert Leatherford. Thank you. It is a pleasure to be here with you. Thank you for the contribution that you've made to the kingdom and your faithfulness. And uh, I know that uh, your ministry has encouraged me as well as, as my family. Well, praise God. Well... We want to talk a little about Dois and where he got this idea from. Thank you for asking. That's a great question. And, you know, he just turned 97 on Sunday. <laughs> uh, and he still shows up for work five days a week. Uh, he Amazing. is an interesting story because he started this when he was 65. So when most people are thinking about retiring, I call him a modern day Moses. Yeah. You know, uh, Moses was 80. God says, ah, I think you're about ready. I can use you. And a uh, <laughs> story similar with, with Doyce Rosser. At 65, he goes on a mission trip to, uh, to India and uh, discovers uh, that there's a number of congregations that are meeting underneath trees, uh, down by the river, uh, in rented facilities. And so I uh, got a heart for the opportunity to build churches in India. And, uh, you know, so he sat down and uh, he said, okay, I, 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 this is a good investment. I'd like to get involved with this. Now, initially, there were six churches that were built at $5,000 a piece. Mm. So uh, he said, let's, let's, let's do it. Uh, but he's not the kind of guy to give his money without giving his heart. And so now he's, he's traveling back over the ocean to check up on his, his investment. And two things happened that kind of uh, set the course. First was is that he saw six buildings on the return trip where previously there had been none. And, and that alone, I mean, think about what's a philanthropist's biggest uh, concern, you know, will the money actually be used as agreed upon? Sure. So he found a man who was faithful. He said, okay, I can trust this man. But the next thing was really the deal maker because everywhere these churches were built, they began to become these community centers for Christ that were used seven days a week as schools, medical clinics, house of God, place to gather. And all of a sudden he's beginning to see this was an incredible return on investment, at least on the kingdom of God. Yes. And uh, you know, it wasn't long after that, that that, uh, that man in India said, you know, we could use another six churches. <laughs> <laughs> you know how the story goes. So he's building churches and he's bankrolling them. Uh, but I tell you what ended up happening is, is he, he got the wise idea that if he told his friends about this, they'd probably help. And that was the beginning of ICM. So he, he says, not only will we do that, but we'll set it up in such a way that we'll be able to be accountable and give you some reports and to turn it into a ministry. That was 32 years ago. Well, we wow. have a VT on this, a video, and they have it ready, I think. So we're going to find out a lot more. Amen. At ICM, our mission is to nurture believers and assist the church. The church is God's distribution system. That's what he put in place himself. He said, go and tell the world about me. The building is simply a place is where they gather to accomplish what 
God would have them be about. And the church adds a dimension that you'll never get outside of that building. My desire is that as God would lead us to be a part of equipping churches to completely alter the narrative of children around the world, because enabling children to be growing up in a loving environment where they hear of Christ will change generations and ultimately change the entire landscape of a nation. A number of years ago, ICM Board approved 10,000 churches started by the end of 2020, 50,000 daughter congregations planted, 100,000 small groups studying Mini Bible College, and a million individuals equipped to be church planters and evangelists. We stand in amazement as we continue to move forward toward those goals. And it has been tremendous joy to see that already we are exceeding the million people that are studying Mini Bible College and equipped now to share about the Word of God in their own language. I believe with all my heart that God is leading us step by step. It's on the heart of God that all people know His Son. That's His longing. Nurturing believers is in our vision statement, but it's not building churches. The church is a tool whereby we can set up a nurturing station for the kingdom. And it's the peoples of that local church sharing the person of Christ, you can't send enough missionaries to hit 600,000 villages, but you can equip the nationals that one-on-one -on -one they can share the person of Christ with their friends and neighbors, and that's the hope. There are still so many things yet to be done. We still have many churches that need to be built, many hope centers that need to be put on the ground so that children's lives will be changed. We have many translations that need to be done so people for the first time can be studying many Bible college, studying the Word of God in their own language. By God's grace, we are moving forward with confidence with these goals that we feel God has given ICM to attain. I think the greatest joy is realizing none of it is about us. It is all about Him. The growth of this ministry isn't about what anyone has done. It's about what God has done. The things that happen here defy human explanation because they are just stories grander than anything we could write as humans. We see God clearly at work growing this ministry. Wow. That's all I can say is wow. <laughs> and, you know, Robert, you've got something that you want to share. You got it in your pocket? I got it in my pocket. <laughs> a Bible school in your pocket? Oh, you know, ICM's ministry is not just about building churches. And as you heard uh, our founder say on that video, it's about nurturing believers. And we have two core competencies to nurture believers. One is providing houses of worship, but the other is audio Bible lessons. And so we've got this really neat device here that's kind of exciting. Uh, it's a solar powered MP3 player. And so it's the right tool for the right time. And let me tell you what I mean by that. Most of the world that we're trying to reach where we're out there, most of the people can't read. 
So audio Bible lessons and audio Bible is the right technique to reach that group of people. And then the simple fact that you've got this, this device that doesn't require batteries that you need to pick up at 7-Eleven, uh, it doesn't require to be plugged into the wall, but all of a sudden, you know, just with the sun's power, six hours, it'll play for three hours at night. And so we're excited to equip each one of our houses of worship with these audio Bible. We've got it in 44 different languages. Hmm. 44, wow. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of people say, well, I don't really care about going to India. My focus is someplace else. Well, their focus is the whole world. So wherever your focus is, ICM is going to be there. And there are a lot of pastors watching. There are a lot of board members watching today. And we want to let you know that this is one of the greatest ministries we've ever had on. And that's the truth. And we're going to be talking about how you can be a part of it. And all you have to do is call Robert and, <laughs> <laughs> and you'll become a part of it. And uh, we, we want to talk to the pastor and he's going to tell us about how this affected your church. Sure. Bob, Jane, it's wonderful, yeah. a blessing to be here. And especially with you, Robert, we've known each other for 22 years and Bay Hope Church has partnered with ICM for 18 of those years. Wow. And so we first became aware of ICM, International Cooperating Ministries, because in the year 2000, when we were planning to build our new sanctuary, our new worship center, one of our building committee members had in a previous church before he moved to us, had funded one of these ICM churches in Vietnam. So he shared with me and we became aware of what ICM was all about. Well, God used that as a divine appointment to prompt our prayers. And so in a period of prayer and discernment with the building committee, God told us that before we turned a single shovel full of dirt for our new house of worship, he wanted us to build houses for other people <coughs> first. And so we simply presented that to the congregation and said, we're not gonna build a sanctuary until we raise enough money up front, not in pledges, but enough up front to build a house of worship for another deserving church, as well as a house for a family in Tampa Bay, a regular house. Well, we had no idea how much God was gonna bless that. And so the church just stepped up immediately and we were blessed with enough funds to not only build a house for a deserving family in Tampa, a whole Habitat for Humanity house that our folks provided physical labor to as well, but we were able to partner with ICM to build a church in Bonas, Cuba, our first of now 60 churches that we've built internationally, and two churches and orphanages in Cambodia. And so having done that, we then were able to start building our house of worship. Wow, that must have taken years. No, it was automatic because our folks responded so quickly. See, I believe that God will honor a God honoring vision and he blessed it within days. Yes. So we were able to get started on all those other houses and international sanctuaries within days so that we could green light our own house of worship at Bay Hope Church. Hmm. Now you say you've built 60 churches. Since the year 2000, we have built 60 churches. Uh, not only uh, our church as an entity, but individuals and groups within our church. Sometimes small groups have come together and raised funds to build a church project. Uh, sometimes our, our youth ministry, which you used to work in sure. years ago, uh, the student ministry has come together over a mission week and they've raised enough funds to build a church internationally. And so it's electrified the entire church 
See, mm -hmm. I believe you get the tide up and all the boats rise, and that's what partnering with ICM has done for us. And it's not just the 60 churches. It's the ripple effect beyond those 60 churches. Because you see, part of the brilliance of Doyce Rosser when he started this whole process with ICM was to say to each church that was funded to build their own sanctuary internationally, you then are challenged to plant five daughter congregations beyond yourselves, which will eventually grow to the size where they will need their own church building. And so I, I've even brought a list because uh, one great thing about ICM is they are very specific and they track all of this with great consistency and accountability. So our 60 churches have daughtered 207 congregations beyond them. Amazing. So 267 uh, total unbelievable. congregations, 4,764 baptisms have resulted from these congregations, and 6,295 salvations, decisions for Jesus Christ God. out of these 267 congregations. Wow. And it's growing every day. Every day. Every, every day. day. In fact, what you mentioned earlier about the mini Bible college on these solar powered MP3 devices, uh, we, we have helped to fund those in Tanzania and in China. And we're hearing marvelous stories about how pastors and small group leaders and the laity of the church are using them in their church and in their small group settings. In fact, one time when you and I were in Tanzania together, sure. I, was uh, there. <laughs> I, I, was, I went into a, a very small hut in a village in Tanzania and sat down with this small group leader uh, and his small group. And I was physically part of watching this and listening to this work. Now it was in Swahili, so I didn't really <laughs> understand it, uh, but watch them interact together and grow wow. deep once they discovered and, and found Jesus Christ and accepted him as Lord and Savior. Now they have a way of being discipled and growing deeper. Wow. wow. And your many churches have won more to the Lord than your church Yes. would ever do. And that's the exciting part about it, is it's, it, it has this very external ripple effect well beyond anything that we could have conceived of or empowered on our own. And there was a reason you started in Tanzania in the first place. You asked somebody, where should I start? And he suggested Tanzania. And right. what was the reason for that? Well, sure. Uh, when, we, when we partnered with ICM in the process, we said, you know, it's great that you know, we want to build churches around the world, and, and we have. We've done them in, in Haiti and in Cuba and Guatemala and India and Cambodia and such. But Tanzania is where we've really concentrated. And we have over three dozen churches in Tanzania oh, yeah. alone. And that was because of a conversation uh, with, with Janice of ICM along with Robert because they had a strategy they wanted to experiment with starting in Tanzania. And that was a strategy of blanketing a nation by identifying key strategic geographical locations for hub churches out of which daughter churches would be planted in such a way that there would be a saturation of the entire nation, that, that walking distance of everybody in the nation to a local church. And so we were challenged by God to go deep in a targeted way in Tanzania and not just kind of in a shotgun blast across the world. And it paid deep kingdom dividends in the lives that have been saved and grown in Jesus Christ there. Well, you've brought up so many questions in my mind. <laughs> um, and we're going to come back right after this. Yes. And uh, some more great music. What a friend we have in Jesus. Alan?
right beside a modern-day Israeli highway. Cuts through the heart of the land and goes up to Jerusalem. Now watch this. We're going to take just a few steps over from the modern-day road, and look what we found. It's a Roman highway that's still here from 2,000 years ago. People that we've read about in the Bible may have used this very road to go up to Jerusalem or to go back home. In the Bible, there are all kinds of stories. Come to Israel, and you will literally see rock-solid evidence that all of those stories really happened. I'm Andy Cook, helping you experience Israel right now. Great music. Well, we've been talking about building churches every place in the world <laughs> and don't understand how they do that, but it is a work of the Holy Spirit. No question about that. Otherwise, it couldn't happen. And I was just so curious about how you picked different places to go other than Tanzania. How did you... Sure. Did they tell you there's a need here or...? It, it was kind of a two-way street. We were curious from ICM as to what the major needs were, how could we meet those needs. But we also had certain hearts as a church for regions of the world. For instance, uh, the reason why we started in Cuba was because we have a sister church in Guantanamo, Cuba. Oh. And so we had a heart for Cuba already. 
And that's what we wanted to do in some of these other nations like Haiti, where we were already doing mission work. So some of it was where we were already invested with, with time and effort and energy. Yeah. Others were saying, all right, Lord, ICM, where do we need to go? Yeah. Wow. What Amazing. made Tanzania so strategic? Oh my goodness. <laughs> Tanzania is a bellwether nation for the rest of Africa. You see, as one of the sub-Saharan countries in Africa, it is representative of what's going to be happening in that particular continent. And Tanzania right now is about a, a third Muslim, a third Christian, and a third animist, you know, native type spiritual religions. And uh, each of those are, are vying for the hearts of the people there. And so it's a strategic place that we need to be making kingdom investments in because it's at a tipping point as to how the hearts of the nation will go. And as goes Tanzania, so goes a lot of Sub-Saharan Africa uh -huh. because it's probably the most stable democracy there. It's one of the most influential countries there. And even though it's one of the poorest countries in the world, it's one of the most stable countries in the world uh -huh. and supportive of the development of these Christian churches there. Wow. Oh, that's great. It's absolutely amazing. <laughs> now, we want to know what you do with that thing there <laughs> and how mm -hmm. you put together a church in a foreign country. How does that happen? Thank you. I, I, I'm telling you, I, I look at this and... I'm proud to be a part of ICM because we, we bring one type of thinking to the table that, that dominates it. And it's really an empowerment model. We don't want to do anything that creates dependence. Okay, so we have to engage in a partnership where both people have dignity. And so everything that we do comes from that type of, of thinking. But what we do to create this partnership is churches that we build have to meet three criteria and they have to make four promises. Three criteria is they have to have 100 members. They have to have a, a pastor that they pay. We don't pay any salaries overseas. So the 100 people are paying the salary of the pastor and they have their own land. Well, if they've got those three things, land, pastor, 100 people, the application comes into us. Kind of goes on a, a list, you know, instead of adopting, you ask what I do. Uh, you've maybe have adopted uh, children through compassion or through world vision. I kind of look at what I do is I help people adopt an entire pastor and an entire third world congregation mm. to build a house of worship for. Wow. So 100 people have their own land, pay their own pastor, they get on the list. Somebody sponsors that. And then in response to this, this is the genius of it. The first thing, and he mentioned it earlier, but every congregation that gets a building is required and has the vision to start five daughter churches. I love that thought because our approach to reaching the world for Jesus Christ is not to send more and more American missionaries, but to empower the third world church mm -hmm. to reach the third world. Yes. Yes. Another thing that they're required to do once they get a building is to pay it forward. And that basically means that they're taking up an offering. Now they've got their building, they have a worship service, they take up an offering. Well, part of that offering goes into a fund in their country to build more churches. So we've built hundreds of churches with indigenous pay it forward money. So mm -hmm. your money kind of gets used twice. You know, you, yeah. you sponsor the church and then the church sponsors the church. Yeah. The next thing is, is that we, uh, we allow them to build it. So it would not be appropriate to say that ICM builds third world churches. ICM helps, helps developing world congregations build themselves the church. Yeah. So they put the sweat equity into it. And then finally, all the churches are, are required to get involved with the mini Bible college. And you had asked a little bit about that, you know, how did this come about? Dick Woodward. Some of you will remember uh, J. Vernon McGee and uh, <laughs> through the Bible. What most people don't know is that J. Vernon McGee had a hand-picked protege that he trained. And that man was Dick Woodward. And he gave through the Bible and all of that to Dick. And Dick then was standing on his shoulders and created what we call the Mini Bible College. And so that's how it began. And those Mini Bible College are 
are now in the Old and New Testament 210 lessons that are produced professionally for the radio. So they, uh, they're broadcast and they're also on this little device. Because the broadcast, you know, it's not always convenient for people to listen to it. But nonetheless, uh, we kind of have it. The airwaves are covering and then you got these houses of worship. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, we have another yeah. video for our viewers. So if you guys would start the video. You know, tell <laughs> how it's done. That's right. In South Africa, it is estimated that there are literally thousands of households that are run by 14 and 15 year old children just because the parents died off as due to AIDS so they have to sort of fend for themselves so the church is the answer because a pastor starts a church it becomes a beacon of hope a beacon of life and a beacon of a, a home There are more than 200,000 practicing pastors in South Africa who are untrained. We do not have enough seminaries to train those pastors. We cannot build them, we cannot fund them fast enough. So we've just come to realize the answer is to empower the leaders to lead their people to the future. When I look at him, I think he is the champion. He is really the guy who's paying the big price to get the Zulu people saved for the kingdom. It's easy when you preach a person then just raise their hand and say, I'm accepting Christ. It doesn't end there. They start a journey. You find that even people are here, they've already repented, they've already accepted Christ. You continue evangelizing them. And then they, they end up going back to sin because now they, 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 we lack some training. In my hometown and rural area, there was no pastor in my local church. So that is when everything started. I mean, I can feel that there's something in me. God is pushing me. God is putting something to me. So I, I need to work for Him. I'm not just happy to just sit in the big and nice houses. My aim is to see somebody coming to Christ. We are the citizens of heaven. That is what the Bible says from the book of Philippians. So in other words, we need to know our stories. We need to make sure that our gospel is being protected. That to me, it's because there is a major need for a training because at the end of the day, you will divert from what the Bible is saying because there is a lack of training. It's helpful to have a mini Bible college in our vernacular language because there is no other tool in Zulu that I've got to help me to understand the Bible. It's just amazing. It's just wow. If you're reading on another language that is not your own language, you struggle sometimes with the vocabulary. I have to sit back and relax now because I don't have to struggle with thinking what is the meaning of this because now it's in my language. To have these extra tools that I've got now, it's actually helping me to do the work of the Lord much easier. So now having all these tools that I've received today in this launch, it makes job easier for me. And then I'm gonna 
go extra miles. I'm gonna go more than what I've been thinking because now I'm well equipped. I've got the information, I've got all the tools. Incredible. That's all I can say. And the vision is incredible. I mean, these are people that are led by the Spirit of God. Absolutely. And, you know, um, I wanted to just reiterate because, uh, Robert, you had already mentioned this earlier on, but these churches do more than just teach the Word of God. They train new leaders. They distribute food when they need to. They care for orphans. They protect children from gangs and trafficking. And I'm sure more than that. That's just what I wrote down, but my goodness. Now, people wow. would say, what denomination is this? <laughs> You're building all these churches. What kind of structure? What do they do? Where do they go for higher ups if they need them and what is your answer robert <laughs> thank you got the best questions <laughs> this is an important question too uh you know we are interdenominational transdenominational we're working with a lot of denominations and we all fall under this one uh, the luzon covenant which was actually formulated under the leadership of billy graham yeah. and so we ask all of our partners to embrace the Luzon Covenant. So if they do that, regardless of whether they're Methodist or Presbyterian, most of them are denominations we've never heard of. And, uh, but nonetheless, they're faithful to the word and uh, Jesus Christ is the savior of the world. So uh, those are the ones that we partner with, they're, they're people that are uh, evangelicals and uh, who love the word and love the Lord. Amen. Now, Pastor, what do you do about your congregation? They want to build, say, Methodist per, uh, buildings. Mm -hmm. Is there such a thing <laughs> as a Methodist building? Sure, we we have <laughs> we've built with Methodist uh, internationally. We've built with the Assemblies of God internationally. You know, we've built with uh, tons of different denominational groups because we believe, at the bottom line, this is about. Jesus and getting people connected to Jesus, it's not about a denomination. Amen. That's the best answer you could give, really. Yeah. And you know what? Um, I would just like to say this is such a, a ministry of integrity. And I wrote down some statistics here. Uh, they keep themselves accountable. And this organization found that they were, they had a, an overall score of 96.46, a financial scoring of 95, and an accountability and transparency rating of 100. Now, what does that say about a ministry? So if you want to get involved, how do they get involved? You know, I have to just say, it, 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 we're proud of that. It's, it's a four-star charity navigator rating. And, uh, you know, one of the things that makes it exciting is that 100% of every donated dollar goes to the cause because the uh, 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 Family Foundation pays for all the general administrative costs of this ministry. So, so doses yeah. of foundation pays for all the costs? Well, the answer is yes. He's got some friends that help him. Uh, so, <laughs> but nonetheless, uh, his Family Foundation does help cover that so that you can feel good about when you make that gift to ICM, it all goes to that project. And that's a lot of integrity when you think about those kind yes, of things. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. uh, people can get involved. I encourage you to go to our website, go to ICM.org. You can certainly call me. I'm going to put my number out there, 813-363-3030. Give me a call. <laughs> I'll take your call. I am uh, the director for the state of Florida. And uh, so I live right here in the Tampa Bay area, but I travel the whole state. I'll come to your church. I'll come to your committee meeting. I'll come to your Sunday school class or your home study. Now, do you have other people like Roberts? Sure, we've got uh, all over the country. <laughs> we've got a team of uh, of eight of us right now. Although there's no one quite like you, Robert. <laughs> 
Well, I have to say, <laughs> you sure keep your passion. And people like to get involved with people that are passionate and on fire, and you can just sense that coming from you. And it's, uh, we sensed it when we first got around you oh, in the green you. room, and it's thank contagious. You. And praise God, you just keep your fire for Jesus. It's really all about Him, isn't it? Isn't it? And people get isn't saved. It? You know, it's just a, a loving him and, and getting saved and being able to call him father. And then not just salvation, but cultivating that intimacy with God on a daily basis Absolutely. is the source of all of uh, my, my joy. Amen. Uh, Amen. And for anyone. You know, I had a question. We just have a little bit of time here in this segment. But do you have any idea about how many people have come to Jesus with all of these churches all over? the world, do you have any idea, do you keep up with how many have actually said, this many, this Sunday accepted Jesus as their savior? I, we do keep records like that. I don't have that exact, we've built <laughs> 7,500 churches wow. That's in 90 countries. And then you've got the daughter churches on top of that, mm -hmm. which totaling uh, somewhere around the neighborhood of 35,000. Yes. Um, how many conversions? Oh my. Oh my! Can only imagine. I, 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 How I, many I, people are going to enter heaven? Oh I my. can only imagine. <laughs> <laughs> that song. We wouldn't see that movie. <laughs> uh, I was going to quote something that Doe said, and also something Dick said. I just loved it. Doe said, "Don't hold back. Don't hold back in your resources, your giftings, or your energy." Isn't that good? Mm. And then another one by Dick Woodward. He said, the whole word for the whole world. And I don't know if we really mentioned this, but this actually started when Dois went to here in West Virginia, mm -hmm. right? West yes. Virginia in the 80s. Dois goes to hear Woodward speaking and just, he opened the word up to him like never before. He was so excited that he started record. He said, can I record this? So he said, yes. And so he recorded it with Transworld Radio. Yes. And, and then he translated it into all these different languages and put it around the world. Then he went to India and saw they had to walk too far for church. <laughs> so, wow, all that started with just a simple going to hear. That is exactly how it Amazing. started. Hearing the word of God. Amen. And that is the germ of life <laughs> as the Holy Amen. Spirit comes, comes through he that. Quickens. Yeah. Amen. We're going to take a break. And when we come back, we'll have some exciting news for you. Uh, as Alan plays for us, goodbye, world, goodbye. And someday we're all going to say that. There are so many different ways to watch the CTN family of networks. We're available on television almost anywhere. Direct TV, Dish Network, Glory Star. We even have a CTN Roku channel. If you live near any of these cities, you can watch us with an indoor outdoor antenna or through your local cable company. Best of all, you can watch CTN anywhere at any time by going to the internet. We're streaming online. Watch your desktop, laptop, tablet, iPad, your phone, or even your watch. Most of our shows are also available on demand. Watch what you want, when you want at ctnonline.com. CTN's family of networks. Take us with you and watch wherever you go. Oh, let's watch on
Well, you've heard a lot today, and I pray that it will sink deep into your hearts. And you will talk wherever you are right now. You might be in California. You might be in Colorado. What you've heard today, your church can do. And it may not grow to the size of pastors here, 3,500 or more, but you could just have a little congregation. And when you get involved in ICM, it's going to mushroom, guarantee you. So get involved. Pastor, it has been a joy to have you. Thank you with us today and, and Robert thank you yes Enjoy. you too Robert <laughs> <laughs> my pleasure uh, there are people that need to know Christ yes right now watching and would you lead them in a prayer certainly you know Bob and Jane Robert we've been talking about a God who builds churches yes. well God is in the building business because he's building your life right now and he's building a house for you in heaven for eternity mm -hmm. and you can have your life built by God right now and an assurance of your heavenly home that he's building for you by believing in and receiving Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior you see you can have the best of both worlds John chapter 10 verse 10 Jesus gives us his job description for when he was on this earth. He said, I've come that you might have life and have it in abundance. So he wants you to have a life built strong and abundantly here. But he also said in John 3:16 that he came because the whole world could believe in him, that whoever would believe in him should not perish but have eternal life. That's your house built in heaven. And you can have a life built here and a house built in heaven by praying this simple prayer with me. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the gift of your son, Jesus Christ. I receive him and believe in him. I thank you for building my life here and for building my home in heaven. I surrender to Jesus. I repent of my sins and receive him as Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank, thank you, you all so very for much. coming and being Hope with us today. And I pray that people will call you from all over the country. <laughs> Amen. God bless you and goodbye.